Have you been part of a data horror story? Do you know what to do to stop your data getting lost in the dark or buried without a trace? We've made a podcast to investigate one data horror story to see what went wrong and how the data horror could have been avoided. Based on real events, the names have been changed to protect the innocent. But the data horror is real. Hello and welcome. Hello. Uh, Now, you're standing in for the real researcher in this story, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Um, Can you tell us why you want to be anonymous? Oh yes, I'm happy to tell you about my data horror story, but I don't want anyone to feel blamed. What happened could happen to anyone, so I, I don't want people who made an honest mistake to feel guilty or ashamed, so that's why I prefer not to be identified. Well, thank you anyway for coming forward to share your story. Um, so tell us about the data in question. It wasn't data you collected yourself, was it? No, I wasn't involved in the original data collection. It was collected by a group of PhD students, and they started about nine years ago, and it took them about five years to collect. So this is quite recent data then? Yes, that's right. And what kind of data was it? They had interviewed almost a thousand people on a sensitive topic, and had also published quite a few papers on using the data. So when did you come into contact with the data? Well, my, my research is in the same area but I haven't had the time or funding to collect the full range of data that they had collected. My supervisor told me about the project and suggested looking at the data again, and there were certain aspects that they hadn't examined in in detail. I was really excited. I I thought it would really enhance my own data and give a better understanding and insight into my results. Sounds good. Yeah. The files were easy to find and had been organized really well. Every file name indicated which participant it related to, and it looked really easy to understand. Oh, great. There were about 2,400 files containing the interview details. It looked like lots of new data. It sounds great, but hang on. Wasn't this a data horror story? Yes, well, that's when I started to find out it wasn't going to be so easy. The files had strange file extensions I didn't recognise. I tried opening them, but I got that message, uh, how do you want to open this file, something like that. And when I found a way to open them, I could just see lots of zeros and ones. It was meaningless. So even though they were only a few years old, the file format was obsolete? Well, I wasn't sure. A couple of the original researchers were still around, so I asked them what I needed to do to read the files. And they told me that the data had been captured using a specially designed software, And as far as they knew, the software was still available. Oh, great. So you just had to get hold of the software and then you could read the files. Well, it turned out to be kind of true. The software is still available, but it's now two versions later in its development. I tried using the new software, but it couldn't open the files. Oh, so what did you do next? Well, so then I contacted the organisation that developed the software and they explained that the older version of the software was still available but could only be used by people who had followed special training. And it was the training that was no longer available. Oh, (laughs) so at this point you'd already put in a lot of effort but it sounds a bit like you were going around in circles. Yeah, it felt like that. The organisation who developed the software put me in touch with someone else at another university And I finally got access to the old software. Oh, great. You would think that might have solved my problem, but it turned out that the old version of the software was so complicated to install and run that you really did need to have had a training. You know, the one they no longer offered. (laughs) Oh, dear. This all sounds very frustrating. And what about the people who ran the original data collection and presumably did follow the original training? Well, unfortunately, none of them are are here at our university anymore. Mm -hmm. I did contact them, but they had done the training more than eight years ago, and now they had no clue how to solve this. So it sounds a bit like you'd reached a dead end. Mm. Was there anything more you could do? No. At this point, the amount of time I was putting into trying to read the data was outweighing the value of having the data. I'm afraid I've more more or less given up. Oh, that's a shame.
Yeah, it is, because the data, rich, data set is very rich and could have really been useful to me and perhaps also to others. So let me get this straight. You have nearly 2,500 data files collected by researchers at your own institution for, and from only a few years ago that could be useful to your research, but you can't open them. Yes, that's right. I have to say this whole experience has made me very interested in good data management and open science in general. Oh, so some good has come out of this after all. Oh yes, well, even more than that. We've, we've all become more aware of the potential issues. The new data we're creating is being converted into sustainable files for archiving, so that it's more accessible in the future. So we've learned one practical lesson from this. But also, the supervisors have now written a data management plan for the project I just talked about, even though the project has now ended. Oh, really? Yeah, I think they were surprised by the scale of the problem that appeared in such a short space of time. So now they're really keen to avoid it happening again. So it sounds like you've all learned a lot more about making file formats that will be accessible in the future and about the usefulness of writing a data management plan. Oh, yes. And do you have any other advice to pass on? Yeah, one thing I think that could help to avoid such problems is to have one person in the project group identified as responsible for the data management at the time when the research is done. Mm -hmm. Now there's more training available to help you think about these kind of problems and more advice available on data management. Well, thanks for mentioning our services. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, um, I actually think it would be useful if the whole team followed the training course. Everyone has a role in good data management and investing a little extra time in preparing your data for future use could save so much time and money later on. Well, we're glad you found the training useful and interesting and thank you for sharing your data horror story with all of us. It's been really nice talking to you. Good luck with your future data management and thank you. Thank you too. <laughs> Don't, Don't let, let bad, bad data, data man management, management ruin, ruin your, your research. research. If you would like to receive help or advice for your data management or attend a training session, contact your data management advisors through your university website and avoid your own. Data Thanks to our anonymous interviewee for sharing this true data horror story and to various staff at Leiden University Libraries for helping to put this podcast together. This podcast was recorded in October 2019. Sound effects were all downloaded from freesound.org with particular thanks to Inspector J www.jshaw.co.uk of freesound.org for two files Piano String Lissando Low A dot wave and Handbells Reverse Cluster dot wave CC by. Thanks to Timbra for the file Dramatic Violin Stab Long Decay dot wave, CC by Non Commercial 3.0, and thanks to Aline Audio for Male Scream 3 dot wave CC0.